I can't think of many, if any, games that play like a first person shooter, but rather than guns, which traps. is obviously what we're all used to, it's replaced with magic. If that alone interests you, then you might be interested in Ghostwire Tokyo. There's no such thing as magic. Now, just like Deathloop before it, Ghostwire Tokyo is a PC and PlayStation only title, at least for the next 12 months. So sorry, Xbox fans. Anyways, Ghostwire Tokyo is developed by Tango Gameworks, the same studio behind the Evil Within series, and rather than a flat-up straight horror game that I refuse to play because I'm a little bitch, Ghostwire Tokyo, however, isn't a third-person horror game. Just as I mentioned, Ghostwire Tokyo is sort of a first-person shooter, but if you were playing as Doctor Strange shooting magic at demons. Story-wise, Tokyo is coated in a THICK fog. It's so THICK! causing anyone to get caught in it to simply disappear and the only evidence that remains is their clothes or items they drop to the ground. In the thick fog are spirits or demons or really whatever you want to call them known as visitors who are basically capturing spirits of civilians who have been caught in the fog. You play as Akito who's woken up from a car crash and is being somewhat possessed by a mysterious character known only as KK and he has given Akito supernatural abilities. <laughs> Caught in this mysterious paranormal event in Tokyo, Akito goes to check in and save on his sister who's been kidnapped by the mastermind behind this event and it's up to you to save your sister and save the city. Pretty standard, really. Gameplay wise, Ghostwire Tokyo jumps straight into it, keeping the game and story a mystery that you unravel the more you play. You're immediately thrown straight into the game, waking up from a car crash and having the side of your face covered in smoke. The venom to your Eddie Brock KK teaches Akito how to defend himself and how to basically use magic to defeat the visitors, save your sister and take out some bosses along the way. Now Ghostwire is an open world first person shooter and it plays a little similar to that of the Far Cry series, at least in my opinion. Akito will have access to magical abilities that's basically airbending from Avatar. Wind attacks are the attacks that are very quick and work a little bit like a pistol. Fire is basically like, say, a grenade launcher. It deals loads of damage and has very little ammo, and it takes a little while to charge up and fire. Water works a bit like a shotgun, dealing damage at close range, but if you charge it up before you fire it, it'll increase its firing arc. Now, Magic in Ghostwire Tokyo works on an ammo system rather than a traditional mana bar that you might expect. Magic can be refilled by removing the cores or hearts of visitors or by using your magic melee attack to destroy items that have been affected by the visitors and the fog. They can be anything from say trash cans, vacuum cleaners to fucking cars. Green gems restore wind, blue restores water and of course red restores your fire magic. Besides using magic too, Akita will have access to a bow and arrow and it works a little bit like how it does in Far Cry where you'll be able to take out enemies in basically nearly any fashion, but you can't collect the arrows you fire, and finding arrows out in the world can be a bit of a pain. Now, where I think Ghost Warrior is a bit like Far Cry is the world, the side missions, and it just feels like a Far Cry game in some instances, again, personally. The world of Tokyo here in Ghost Warrior is coated in fog that if Akito walks through, he'll take damage, and if you stay in it for too long, you'll die. No! No! Wait a minute. <sighs> Bronchial tubes clearing. Asthma disappearing. Acne remains, but asthma disappearing. Now, to clear the fog, you need to basically clear and clean shrines that will clear the fog in an area. Basically, it's like clearing a camp in Far Cry where you would get map reveal after you do so, but here in Ghostwire, it clears the fog. To continue in story missions, you need to clear shrines to be able to move to the next required area that happens to be surrounded in a fuckload of fog. Unlike Far Cry though, there isn't vehicles to use. As the civilians of Tokyo have disappeared like Yoda in the middle of a sentence, cars are flipped and crashed and the narrow streets of Tokyo wouldn't really work well if you could simply just drive around. But that doesn't mean you can't get around Tokyo. Akito will be able to magically grapple onto flying bird-like men creatures to hoist himself up into a rooftop. From there you're on the roofs and you'll be able to double jump and glide from rooftop to rooftop. 
Now, sadly, you're not gliding around like Batman, but you're using your new supernatural abilities, courtesy of KK, to get around the world of Tokyo. Now, just like in loads of other video games, you'll be able to level up Aikido. Obviously, you're not powerful enough to take on the big bad of Ghostwire yet, but by doing side missions and main missions, you'll level up and get ability points. You can make your executions to visitors faster, you can attack quicker with your air bending slash magic abilities, glide for longer periods of time, or increase basically a sonar blip that Aikido has that reminds me a little bit of the location marker or tracking ability in, say, Dead Space. Aikido sort of blips the ground and sets off a sonar ping, and you can follow the objective markers, scan out for nearby enemies in the area, which, yes, does come in handy, or best of all, read the minds of cats and dogs in the streets. In these menus too, you'll also be able to change Aikido's clothes and customize them how you'd like and equip prayer beads, which will say give Aikido a 10% damage buff of all of his airbending attacks. Now unsurprisingly, Ghostwire Tokyo is set in Tokyo, and visually the world here is pretty damn hot. The rain and the reflections in the environment due to the rain is something that I never got tired of. Walking through the world of Ghostwire and seeing clothes litter the streets sort of reminds me of the first time we're introduced to Cell in Dragon Ball Z. While the world may not have people running around in them, it doesn't mean you're not alone. Sure, there's visitors running around, but there's also a heap of cats and dogs and other wildlife. Yes, you can pat the dogs and you can even feed them. If you buy dog food, and yeah, I'll come back to that in a second, but if you buy or find dog food and feed it to a dog, they'll reward you by leading you to treasure or digging up buried treasure. Sound design here too. Even the characters and enemies are pretty rad. For starters, this game is in Japanese with English subtitles, or at least that's how I played it, and that's how the game should be played. And it immersed me further in the game. The first enemy variant you go up against is basically Slender Man with an umbrella. To defeat any enemy, you need to deal damage to them where their core becomes exposed, and then you use your magic to either pull it out from a distance or get it out with your hands. This is kind of dope too that if you expose multiple enemy cores, you can basically pull off multiple enemies at once. <gasps> That's what she said. <laughs> You'll also have access to a grenade-like weapon to stun enemies, giving you time to either get some damage in or run around and find some health or ammo pickups. Honestly though, I couldn't really be bothered using these. The quiet sounds of the streets only to hear a screech of a flying ghost or a visitor nearby is something that Ghostwire Tokyo also nails. Seeing headless school kids run towards you was fucking freaky. We got no food, we got no jobs. Our pet's heads are falling off! Or, in one instance, I was facing off against an enemy that can only be described as an old lady with a stone head to hear high heels running towards me as a female slender man. Slender woman? Anyways, for me to hear high heels running towards me and them to be right in front of me, and yeah, I shat myself. We gotta go back home, man. Why? I pooped my pants. While this game isn't a horror title like Evil Within, there are some horror elements sprinkled in here and there that in some instances it also sort of reminded me of the game Fear. The throughout the world of Ghostwire you'll find souls that need saving from visitors or just randomly throughout the world. These souls can be gathered and saved in a piece of paper and then deposited in phone booths which then reward you with experience and money. Experience levels you up and money can be exchanged for goods and services. Explain how money can be exchanged for goods and services. Woohoo! <laughs> there are certain moments too in the game where souls will start to be captured by the visitors and you'll need to fight them off and defend the souls before they're captured in these lament configuration looking devices. We have such sights to show you. But there are some things here that I personally wasn't a fan of with Ghostwire Tokyo. And no, these aren't things like screen tearing or game breaking bugs. The game ran fine, smoothly, it looked great. But I just think Ghostwire Tokyo just isn't a game for me. No, not every game needs to be for me, but however, if you're a shooter fan looking for something a bit different with more of a supernatural suspense, light horror aspect, then yeah, you might really dig this. There is a load of story here in Ghostwire, and honestly, the first hour of gameplay here you're playing for maybe about 15 minutes while the rest of it is just flat cutscenes. And it sort of felt like I was playing Metal Gear Solid 4 or something again because that game had a lot of cutscenes. Awesome. At first I was loving the cutscenes as the story and mystery was slowly unwrapping, but sadly I was getting a little bored after some time. <laughs> Speaking of getting bored, I found the world and the combat to get very repetitive and boring Again, at least, personally. 
As the world is empty due to people evaporating in the fog, you know that you're the only person running around and that there's just visitors and animals and cats running stalls. Yet, cats run stalls here in Ghostwire Tokyo and you'll be able to buy arrow and food and the aforementioned dog food. But it would have been cool if Ghostwire Tokyo had the mist effect to it. Where if you went inside hospitals or buildings or stores, there'd be civilians hiding out inside them like in the movie, the novel or the real mediocre TV series, you know, The Mist. As this world isn't populated with people, it kind of felt like Fallout 76 when that originally launched, where there's no one anywhere and you know that there's no one anywhere. While the sound design of the visitors worked perfectly with their creeper designs, the music is nothing to write home about. Now Fallout has a great soundtrack with its classical music and Doom and Wolfenstein has awesome metal, but Ghostwire doesn't really have a musical identity. Small thing to some sure, but music helps keep me get involved with the game, and just like WWE 2K before this, I found myself listening to Spotify or chatting with mates on Discord to help sort of keep me entertained because there are moments in Ghostwire where you're really doing nothing and nothing's happening. You're moving from the end of one mission to another and you're clearing fog along the way and it kind of felt tedious. Well, graphically, it looks pretty sweet and using magic in a first person shooter sense is also really cool. After about three or four hours, I found myself getting a bit bored from it. But these are my issues with Ghostwire and they might not be yours. You might get wrapped up in the story here and dive straight in completing all the side missions and the main story and doing multiple run throughs. The idea of a magical first person shooter might be right up your alley and hey that's a damn great idea in my opinion, but having to save your sister and the city and the souls along the way might keep you hooked like going to a charcoal chicken shop before they close so you get free chips on your way out. If you like what you've seen both visually, gameplay or a narrative point of view then yeah give it a crack because while this might not be for me, I can definitely recommend this game to a couple of mates of mine who would get a good crack out of this. Are you sure you pooped him? Am I sure? Am I sure? Yeah! Yes, that is poop in my pants. That is nasty man. It's natural man.